What's going on guys, it's Simo. Now today I'm gonna to be bringing to you a live commentary over a full Bakugan match. A lot of you guys are interested in this game, but don't really know what's going on when I have showed you guys some Bakugan content. So I figured the best way to learn is to demonstrate by example. And we've got two of the head creators of the game facing off, and I'm gonna go ahead and commentate play by play. So what's happening here is at the start of every game, you are gonna have your hex cores. These are how the Bakugan magnetize and open up, and both players are going to start with five cards in their opening hand. So it's very similar to how you would play Yu-Gi-Oh! But what's interesting about Bakugan is that you actually have shared turns. So instead of playing one person and then the other, you do your actions at the same time. So both, both players drew a card, both players placed one card uh, as energy, something similar to like mana from like Magic the Gathering. Both players then picked a Bakugan, and now we see that the player on the left had his Bakugan open and the player on the right did not. So now what this means is that since the right Bakugan did magnetize, that does consider that it opened even though the, the mechanism failed to open. If it does magnetize and sticks, that still technically counts. So both of them are going to battle. So now we have to compare their B power values. So both of the Hydra's Ultra, the one on the left, and the Webum Ultra, the one on the right, are gonna have the same value. And now both players have to reveal the top card of their deck to see which energy value is the most, and that's who wins. So that means here that the player on the right, he had the higher uh, energy cost card, which means he's going to mill the damage rating that is on that card. So he's gonna go ahead and mill the top four cards of his deck. The objective of Bakugan is to mill out your opponent. So it's very interesting that mill is the central way to deal damage in this game, but it's interesting from a card economy standpoint because as card game players, we love drawing cards, but at the same time, your deck is your life. So the more you draw, the closer you are to killing yourself. So now we're on turn two, both players drew another card and they placed a card for energy. What's neat about this game is that all cards are basically quick play. So you can play any card at any time, essentially. So both players have picked their Bakugan and now they're gonna both open here. So we see that we have the Dragonoid Ultra there on the right, and we have the same Hydra's Ultra on the left opening up. So on the left, we have 800 B power, and on the right, we have 600 B power. So currently, the Hydra's Ultra on the left is winning, but now these players have two energy to work with, so now they can possibly play cards to raise their B power, to lose the, uh, lower the opposing Bakugan's B power, and the objective is whichever one is higher, they're gonna mill that many cards off the top of their deck, equal to the Bakugan's damage rating, and that's on each card. So. We see that the player on the right had to take one damage, but they lost a very significant card being Tiger Reflex, a card that would stop a damage or a, uh, an oncoming, oncoming attack later on, a very powerful card for the player on the right. During the end of the turn though, the player on the right is going to use two of his energy to make one of, of that card that he activated turn to energy, turn into energy, effectively ramping him up to a total of three. Both players are now on turn three. They drew for turn, played in energy, Remember the player on the right now has four energy because he played the card that converts itself into energy So he has ramped ahead And now both players have one Bakugan open if they can manage to get three open up They are gonna be able to do a team attack and inflict a huge amount of damage to the other player We see the player on the right play Dan Kuzo for four energy a very powerful card that every time a Bakugan opens, you can reveal the top card of your deck. And if it's not a flip card, you can play that card for free. So we see that the player on the right did get his card to, uh, his Bakugan to open. But we see a card here, Deep Dive, being played from the player on the left, which you get to draw a card and open that, or you get to re-roll the Bakugan, which he did manage to open. So now here we saw Dan revealing another copy of Dan. Now it won't trigger the second copy to go again, but now anytime the player on the right opens his Bakugan at any time, he'll get to reveal the top two cards of his deck and possibly play two cards every turn for free. So Dan is a very powerful card. However, the player on the right is going to take a total of four damage. He doesn't have anything else because he spent all of his energy uh, playing that first Dan, so he has no way to win the battle in this specific instance. However, it was only four damage. It was not too bad. And the player on the right is going to be set up for a massive turns later on. However, the player on the left is now set up for a team attack. And this could be a really big deal because if he does win this next battle, he's going to add the damage ratings of all three of his Bakugan together. And that's how many cards the player
player on the right is going to have to mill off the top of their deck. So the player on the left is playing an energy, the player on the right plays one as well, and they are picking their Bakugan. Alright, so there's the brawl. Both Bakugan did open, so now they're going to have to fight and see which one wins. Now the Dans are going to trigger here. He's going to reveal an Air Zero, and the second Dan is going to reveal a uh, Titan Nilius Ultra, which is an evolution card. Now he gets to use Air Zero, which reveals the top card and potentially plays it. So it looks like he's going to just leave it there. But evolutions are really cool. So basically they just upgrade your original Bakugan. They're cards that you just play on top of your Bakugan. And they basically give it better stats. They give it different abilities. And they're really strong. But here we go. We see a card called Divine Intervention. It costs four energy. And basically he has to re-roll his Bakugan. But if he manages to open, he gets to play a card from his hand for free. So let's go ahead and see if he can manage to pull it off. Alrighty, here we go. It all comes down to this. And he missed. So that could be a very big payoff card if that card actually managed, or if that Bakugan managed to open, that could have been huge. He could have been able to play a very powerful card. However, he missed. So not only did he miss that, but now he's going to take a team attack here because his Bakugan is no longer open. We see the player on the left upgrading his Fangzor into a Hyper Fangzor in Evolution, which when it's played, it allows the player on the left to draw three cards. So now the team attack is coming in for a total of eight. But the player on the right reveals a Tiger Reflex, which because he has more energy than his opponent, he gets to negate the rest of the attack. So very, very powerful card. Eight damage wouldn't have been the worst if it managed to go through. However, only having to take two, especially since it's free because he has more energy, is a pretty nice save. So once all three of your Bakugan have com uh, committed, a, uh, excuse me, once they've uh, commenced the team attack, you have to go ahead and retract all three and just start over all over again. Now, the nice thing is the evolutions stay on the Bakugan unless they get destroyed by another card's effect. So that upgraded stats are going to stay there. That Hyper Fangs are now sitting on a thousand B power. Both players drew a card, they played an energy. We're gonna see another brawl here. Ooh, that Titan Dragonoid opening, or that uh, Dragonoid Ultra, excuse me, opening up. Now we're gonna see if the player on the left has anything. Doesn't look like it. He's gonna trigger both of these Dan cards. We see that card from before. He could play it for free and potentially play a card from his hand. He's contemplating. That card normally costs four energy, but he does have to re-roll. And he's gonna go for it. But there is another Dan that needs to be triggered. So player on the right just showing that he still has another Dan to trigger, but he's going to have this divine intervention go through first. All right, so the player on the right just getting that ready, and let's see if he can hit it this time. And there he goes, he got it. So now he gets to play a card from his hand for free, not playing the energy cost, and he's gonna upgrade into Diamond Dragonoid Ultra, which has an absolutely ridiculously powerful card. But the cool thing is here, because he opened again, he gets to trigger both Dans again, Unfortunately, he revealed a flip card, so that nullifies all of those triggers because a flip card cannot be played. So all three of those triggers would just go on that flip card and nothing's going to happen. But if it weren't a flip, he'd be able to play three cards potentially from the top of his deck for free. Now that Diamond Dragonoid Ultra has 2,050 B power, which is probably one of the highest B powers possible in the game at the moment. And the player on the left is trying to see if he's able to beat that B power. It's not impossible, but he's going to have to use a lot of resources to do it. All right. going for the re -roll. So he's starting off with a reroll here. That will grant him some B power. Oh, he misses the reroll. So if he would have hit that reroll, he would have been able to draw two cards in addition to um, having the ability to just boost up his uh, Fangzor's B power. So now the player on the left is going to take 15 damage and now we're going to see if he has any way to stop all the damage coming in from this Diamond Dragonoid Ultra. This could be a big hit. There are some cards that are cheap enough to stop it, but it looks like he's going to be taking the full 15 damage here. 
all 15 damage. He did hit a flip on his first card, but it did cost three energy to play. And because he committed four energy to play that card, to reroll his Bakugan, potentially get some B power and draw some cards, he wasn't able to use that stop. So that might've been a miscalculation on his part. We're going to have to see how this rest of this match plays out. We have the player on the left with a very small deck now, which means that he only has maybe one or two attacks left before it is game over. Player on the right might have one or two as well. We will just have to see. So the player on the right, his B power on his Titan Nilius Ultra has 1100 B power because of that evolution. Player on the left is going to pick the Hydrus Ultra. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we have a brawl. Both of the Bakugan have opened. So the player on the right is on tw is on 1200 B power. And now the Dans are going to trigger. He gets to open or reveal two. So he's going to minus 500 with the first one. And then he gets to Evo into his uh, Webum's Evo for free as well. You really get to see the power of Dan in this match, especially as the game progresses. But now we have to see if the player on the left is going to be able to beat that 1200, also with the minus 500 from that nature's power. So it's gonna be a very big uphill battle for the player on the left here. Let's see if he can do it. He has six energy and because he's playing uh, Aquas, Aquas has a lot of B power enhancing cards. So he's going to Evo. So now he's currently up to 750 and Wave Slash for an extra thousand. So that's 1750. And now because there is Shadow Strike on that Evo of that Hyper Nilius Ultra, it means that the Nature's Power does no longer affect the Hyper Nilius. So he actually has even more B power than necessary. So that's a huge swing of tempo here, and the player on the right is going to be taking a significant hit. However, he did not use any of his energy, so if he does reveal any of his stops, he will have the potential to keep this game going. So the player on the right is going to go ahead and retract his uh, Titan Ilias Ultra. And this is going to be 11 damage coming in here. We're gonna have to see if he's going to be able to stop this because 11 damage could finish him off here. Uh oh, this could look like it could be the end. Ooh, there's a luck aura, but that doesn't stop it. That just allows him to play stuff for free from his hand. There's a Ventus power. So Ventus power does stop that attack, but both players' decks are now extremely low. The game is down to this final turn. So this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. The player on the left has a lot of cards in hand. Both players have a ton of energy, so anything can happen. Not to mention if one player opens and the other one doesn't, that could just completely shift the tide of battle. So this Titan Nilius Ultra is gonna be coming in here. Player on the left has the choice between the Hyper Fangzor as well as the Aurelius Fangzor, the gold one. So we're going to go ahead and see what the player on the left wants to choose. Going with the Hyper Fangzor with a base power of 1,000. Ooh, so the Hyper Nilius has opened, but there is a deep dive. Costs one energy. He gets to draw a card and re-roll the Bakugan. So there is a chance he is still in this. Oh, he missed again. Does he have another re-roll though? He does! Okay, so he's gonna pay four energy to re-roll, and if he gets this re-roll, he gets to draw two cards as well. There he goes! All right, I'm at 1400. So the player on the right is at 1400. Player on the left is at 1600. Does the player on the right have anything he can do? Looks like he's gonna pay four energy. He's gonna... Crystal Quake, he gets to draw two cards, and then the Hyper Fangzor is going to lose 700 B power going down to 900 compared to the player on the right's 1400 B power. So there's a Tides, so that's up to 1300 now because it's plus four. There's an Everett Ray bringing it up just over by a hundred. Is there anything else the player on the right has?
It looks like he's going to take it. Player on the left is going to win. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and this demonstration of how Bakugan is played. Definitely was a pleasure to commentate it for you guys, and we'll catch you next time.